And our first guest has been sounding the alarm on Terra Luna for months as well. He's been threatened, bullied, and chastised online for pointing out the flaws of the Terra ecosystem. But in the end, he was right. And folks would have benefited from listening to him rather than attacking him. Joining us now is Kevin Zhou, co-founder of Galwa Capital High. Kevin, thanks for joining us. So you saw this coming a mile away. Did you think it, though, it would happen this quickly? <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I think overall, uh, I didn't expect it to happen this quickly. You know, I imagine that it might have dragged on for another couple of months. Uh, I think in the end, it was inevitable. Uh, but in terms of, you know, just how suddenly it happened, and then just how quickly it played out over, you know, three or four days, uh, you know, that was a lot quicker than I thought. Uh, and I wanted to even give them the benefit of the doubt that, you know, what I was saying is that I didn't even think that this was purely just a bank run. Uh, kind of problem. I thought that, you know, even if it happened in slow motion, even if it was kind of like something like a bank walk, um, it was more about this thing not being solvent. So I could have seen this whole unwind happening over, you know, a period of weeks rather than like three or four days. So it's been it's been very brutal, uh, very sharp. Um, so in that sense, you know, I'm a bit surprised, but I think overall, uh, you know, the thesis that this thing was unsound, uh, that the mechanism was flawed, uh, I think did play out as expected. Maybe you can walk us through how you you saw this thing triggered, because there's been, on top of that, so many conspiracy theories. I mean, even some folks are saying Gala Capital, Capital was behind the short sell. Uh, other conspiracy theories are that Citadel and BlackRock were involved, but they have denied those rumors. They say they don't even trade in the UST. Yeah, you know, it's it's probably not going to be one of these uh, really large uh, financial shops from, from TradFi. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, they have serious problems getting approval from compliance to even touch a lot of these kinds of assets, um, let alone something as uh, you know, you know, bizarre and, and sort of not very mainstream, uh, you know, compared to Bitcoin and Ether as as UST and Luna. Um, so, you know, I think we're really in the phase of the market right now where, you know, there's been a lot of people hurt, a lot of people have lost their homes, uh, you know, lost uh, tons of money, maybe their life savings, and they want to look for somebody to blame, right? And I think it's really easy uh, to kind of like enter into this finger pointing phase of, in, in the cycle where, you know, everybody is sort of pointing outwards uh, rather than, I think, looking within. And I think really what this thing was is this thing was just a completely unsustainable, um, effectively uh, reduces down to some kind of Ponzi. And, you know, I think really they should be looking at their dear leader, uh, you know, Do Kwan. I think they should be looking at within themselves. How did greed get this, this bad? Um, you know, I think, you know, when you look at this thing, uh, and this is like even I would say months ago, even in November, um, you know, I have some colleagues who are even tweeting about this. Um, even then, it, it was obvious. You know, I think from a pure kind of rational and like pure logic basis, uh, it was just absolutely obvious. But I think what made it not obvious is that, you know, just people kind of got caught up in the hype cycle. And then there's that element of, you know, human psychology. There's that element of greed. Um, and that, that kind of blinds us to, to being able to look at things, um, you know, very objectively. And I think that's kind of what was going on. It was the age of narrative. You had these uh, influencers on Twitter uh, who were just shilling this stuff. And it was, you know, backed by a lot of very reputable investors um, and, and, you know, were very well financed with uh, a lot of firepower, a lot of dry powder and capitalization. So, you know, it was just a concoction of all of these bad things put together uh, and then, you know, I think just kind of through logic and reason uh, out the window. So I think that's kind of what happened. Uh, it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't us. Uh, you know, certainly we participated in, you know, shorting the market, um, but that was just, you know, one part of, I'm sure, you know, many people who were just dumping their holdings uh, and, and shorting the market themselves. And I think really, you know, it's just a, a kind of in a decentralized way, um, everybody eventually saw, uh, what, you know, the writing on the wall, and then everybody started to pile on. And at that point, it's pretty much irrecoverable because at that point, the sentiment is so bad um, that, you know, it just causes the price to go down, causing sentiment to further worsen. And you enter into this kind of like, not even just a mechanical death spiral, but also a psychological death spiral. And I think that's basically so what, what we saw happen. Was, uh, Kevin, was one of the signs, one of the signs, at least the, uh, it, it, this whole uh, initiative to purchase all this Bitcoin that, you know, it, he, uh, it seems like only yesterday uh, Doe was saying he was going to be the biggest holder of, of Bitcoin outside of, of uh, Satoshi. 
Um, do you think that that should have been a massive red flag? Looking back, do you think that should have been a massive red flag to anybody who had put money in? Or was it when the investors uh, started giving him hundreds of millions of dollars to, to keep the party going? Yeah, you know, I think certainly that was a red flag. I, I think what they did there uh, wasn't so much a bad move as it was that it signaled to the market that they no longer believed in their own narrative, which is that their entire mechanism is sound without collateral, right? But it, they're almost capitulating on their narrative by saying that, okay, we're actually going to go ahead and buy some external collateral to defend this peg in case something happens. It almost weakens kind of their position to even admit something like that. Um, so, you know, I think that that, you know, definitely had, had harmed them uh, in that way. But at the same time, I think it also helped them in a little bit in the sense that they did they did have some external collateral that did cushion some of the drop. It wasn't enough to stop, um, you know, this death spiral. Uh, but, you know, it was something there. And I want to say one other thing is that, you know, right now we're seeing so much financial contagion across all these different markets, right? Not just UST, uh, not just Luna. And uh, I think some of the reason for that is that you have a lot of these big players who are, you know, long Luna, who are leveraged long Luna, leveraged on, you know, being long UST, you know, has their, have their money on Anchor, uh, which is the bar lending protocol uh, on, on the Terra blockchain, uh, you know, generating, you know, fairly high yields for, for the current environment. And, you know, these funds, I think at this point, maybe having these positions are, were getting margin called and they had to sell off all their other good assets in all of these other, you know, um, you know, assets in crypto, you know, Bitcoin, their Bitcoin, their Ether, their, you know, all their other holdings in their portfolio to meet these margin calls. Uh, and this is why I think a lot of this kind of trickled out yeah. to uh, some of these other other assets and there was uh, contingent. Yeah. Yet we're seeing UST still alive. It's like it's like Frankenstein's monster. I mean, this thing is still alive. It has uh, something like seven billion dollars in value at the moment, or uh, over the, you know about an hour ago. Uh, and yet Luna itself was about two hundred eighty million dollars. So what's keeping UST alive? Like, how is this thing not dead yet? Yeah, you know, it could really be a couple of things. Uh, certainly, I don't think based on just the numbers, just the comparison of Luna's market cap to UST's market cap, uh, that, you know, that this price is justified. I think there's um, at least, I would say, seven to eight billion dollars worth of bad debt within the system that needs to get flushed out. Now, the way that, uh, you know, right now people are flushing it out is that they're converting UST to Luna. Uh, to one dollars, you know, one UST to one dollars worth of Luna, uh, based on the underlying virtual AMM, uh, the automated market maker uh, implicit to the protocol. Um, but that can only um, handle so much. Even you know, even if you're minting, you know, a million units of Luna every minute, um, there's only so much bid side liquidity on Luna. I think that's really what we're seeing is that we're seeing the Luna price now tank to such a level that the exchanges have had to change their tick size uh, for. Yeah. Uh, you know, where, you know, what the ticks will be for um, uh, for their Luna books. So, you know, at some point, the actual fair value of Luna is going to drop, in my opinion, below uh, a single tick, right? So if a single tick is like a penny, and let's say all of a sudden now uh, Luna eventually drops to a point where it's less than half a penny, right, um, and rounds down to zero, then finally the entire bid side of Luna will be evaporated. It'll be a one-sided order book, only offers, no bids. And at that point, finally, uh, you know, this loop of, you know, uh, you know, doing this arbitrage of UST and converting it to Luna uh, will finally close. And at that point, I think we'll see a much heavier de-pegging uh, on, on UST. And I, I don't want to say what, you know, where I think the final price is going to be. I think that's a lot harder to say, but I certainly think that, you know, at its current price of, uh, you know, what is it like, uh, 62 cents, 63 cents. Yeah. Uh, I think definitely a bit optimistic for just how much bad debt there is in, in, in the system. Yeah, Kevin, I was just going to follow up on that. I mean, you know, 60, 60 something cents is obviously very far away from $1, but it's also pretty far from zero, which is kind of amazing. And I guess the question is, is there any universe in which they would be able to salvage this? I know this is highly, highly unlikely, but it seems like it's not zero either, right? Is there any world in which they would be able to restore the peg? Because there's definitely some sort of, you know, magical thinking around this on, on the internet. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, to 
some extent, yes, and to some extent, no. So it really depends on what you mean by peg. I, I think really what they should have done is that much earlier on, they should have uh, basically just completely re-eval- like revalued their currency and um, let everybody take a massive haircut, right? So now, and just re-peg it and just say, well, now UST is no longer worth a dollar. We're going to re-peg it at 10 cents to the dollar, right? And I think if they did that much earlier on, I think that at least could have um, relieved a lot of the selling pressure on Luna itself. Now, I, I don't know. I don't think that would be enough to, to, to you know, basically save things. But I think that that would be uh, a fairly prudent course of action. You know, if I was Fed chairman of the, of the Terra chain, I would have done that long time ago. I would have been absolutely brutal and had a huge devaluation of the currency. Um, but you know, now at now at this point, what I would say is that. Um, we kind of just at this point we're just undergoing hyperinflation of of Luna in order to support the exiting of UST, and I think right now we just have to let it let it kind of let it happen. Um, you know the Terraform Labs, uh, you know they have already come out with some proposals on what to do with the community uh, UST. So some of the bad debt is just held by the community funds uh, themselves, and I think about 11 percent of the outstanding uh, circulating supply, and they're. Uh, deciding just to completely burn it, as in just completely throw it away. Um, we'll see if the proposal passes. I think that's good. Uh, it's not quite enough. Uh, that counts for one point something billion uh, units of UST. Um, so you know, still a lot of bad debt in the system. But I think you know, definitely a step in the right direction. It's just that at the end of the day, all of this bad debt has to get flushed out, and uh, you know, we're still in the early innings of that right now.